continuing with our discussion about voltage control oscillators. Last time we saw how uh, we can come up with uh, an integrator where uh, voltage dependent current was charging a capacitor and this voltage was uh, applied across a Schmitt trigger and how the Schmitt trigger in turn was controlling the discharging operation such that okay, charging and discharging currents are the same. Now, here today we are having another important circuit which is commonly used for voltage control oscillators in integrated circuits and that is called emitter coupled multivibrator. This circuit most probably might have been exposed to you in your uh, digital course. However, we will uh, go through the motions of analysis of this circuit. What is a multivibrator? Where we have regenerative uh, feedback, okay, positive feedback, regenerative, where one inverter is cascaded onto another inverter and that is again output is connected back to the original inverter. One inverter okay, coupled onto another inverter and the output finally given back again to the original inverter results in a uh, complete regenerative positive feedback. What it means is it is like the case of a Schmitt trigger, we can have only two states possible, either T1 can be on and T2 is off or T1 can be off and T2 can be on. These are the only two possible states in which it can exist. Okay. And while transiting, it will go through the active region and there will be regenerative feedback and it will go quickly from on to off or off to on. Okay. So, in this configuration where the base of one transistor is connected to the collector and base of the other transistor is connected to the collector, there is regenerative fe positive feedback. Okay. And therefore, either T1 is off and T2 is on or T1 is on and T2 is on. So, let us assume that T1 is off. So, let us consider T1 off and T2 on. So, T1 is off. That means, for practical purposes, this is open. And T2 is therefore, in uh, let us say saturation or something. Just enter saturation because it is on. Now, what happens? You can see that the capacitor is going to get charged by means of current source current I naught. So, the constant current I naught will be flowing through this. this direction. So, what will be the voltage developed? I naught by C into T. That means, voltage will be increasing that is what is depicted here as <coughs> uh, V e 2. The voltage if you observe here, it will be linearly increasing at a rate which is given by I naught by C into T. Is this point understood? Plus here and minus here. So, the voltage will be increasing. Okay. Now, we have assumed T 1 to be off and T 2 is on. There is this potential also will be linearly increasing above this. It, this potential, it is linearly increasing. That means, this will be above this by V gamma and therefore, this will be linearly increasing. In turn, this also is going to, because this is in saturation, this also is going to linearly increase. That means, the base of this transistor okay, is going to have its voltage linearly increasing. Originally, it was assumed to be off. The moment this voltage between V e 1 and this base reaches V gamma, it is brought into the active region. Now, again regenerative feedback sets in and now T 1 will be on and T 2 will be off. Okay. T 1 will be on and T 2 is going to be off immediately. This is due to regenerative feedback. So, what happens is that T 1 is going to be immediately on 
and T2 is going to be off. So, now the current in this is going to change direction, okay, it is going to flow in this direction. So, the voltage is going to be plus here and minus here. Meanwhile, V E 2 is going to remain at whatever constant value it had, okay. And whereas, V E 1 is going to linearly increase at the same rate of what? I naught by C entity. So, linearly increase. So, we have here V E 1 okay, is going to increase linearly, it will go on like this. Once again, we have this voltage linearly increasing, this voltage linearly increasing. Once again, a time will come when this voltage okay, reaches sufficient value as to drive this to active region, when again it okay, gets regenerative feed, positive feedback and this will be on and this will be on. Okay. This will go on. So, actually speaking therefore, you will see a kind of waveform here and capacitor voltage is going to jump okay, at every point from plus V gamma to minus V gamma. The moment the current switching occurs, the capacitor voltage is going to jump and therefore, you see this kind of waveform okay, repeated okay, periodically. Now, if you want a triangular waveform, you already get it. How? From this, you can get a triangular waveform simply by taking V e 1 minus V e 2, because current is going to either go this way or this way. So, V e 1 minus V e 2 will be nothing but a triangular waveform. Okay. This subtracted from that, that means it will give you this kind of triangle, completes the triangle. If you want a sawtooth waveform, you superimpose this over this, right? you get a nice sawtooth. Right? So, you can see that by simply processing these voltages further, we get two important waveforms very simply, a triangle okay, as well as a sawtooth. There is a triangle okay, and the sawtooth is going to be and if you take the waveform here, for example, V C 1, when uh, this is off let us say and this is fully on this is off. So, this voltage is going towards V s, right, except for a small drop here. And this is on, that means a full current of I naught plus I naught, which is 2 I naught is flowing through this. So, V c, uh, this voltage is going to V s minus 2 I naught R c. Okay. So, this voltage is always going to uh, change from V c, okay, that is V s minus 2 I naught R c, V s to V s minus 2 I naught. Similarly, this voltage, they will be out of phase okay, by 180 degrees. Right? When this is going high, this is going low. When this is going low, this is going high. Right? So, they are going to be out of phase by 180 degrees. So, when this is V s, 
this is V s minus 2 i naught R c, when this is V s, this is V s minus 2 i naught. If you take the voltage across this, you will get a square wave of magnitude 2 i naught R c amplitude, right? Square wave, okay. So, you can get square wave from here to ground, here to ground or if you take the voltage across this. So, simultaneously you can get triangular wave here, square wave here and if you add this, you can get sawtooth. So, this is a versatile function generator circuit. The frequency of oscillation of this can be easily found out because we know that I naught by C into T is the rate at which it is going on okay? and it is going from minus V gamma to plus V gamma. So, we have 2 V gamma equals I naught by C into T by 2. Right? So, we get T equals 4 C V gamma by I naught. Okay. Our frequency of oscillation F is equal to I naught by 4 C V gamma. Right. I naught can be, I naught is a current source, can be made voltage controlled we know the current mirror etcetera we can use. Okay. So, I can make I naught voltage controlled using current mirror technique and therefore, I can make this a voltage controlled oscillator linear. Okay. So, this is again one of the most common VCOs used in for example, uh, phi 6 0 okay. also is a PLL okay, which uses uh, this kind of VCO for its application. Right. So, whether it is a function generator or a voltage controlled oscillator, the basic concept that is used is a current source charging a capacitor and a regenerative feedback circuit. These are the two things which are mainly used in almost all ICs meant for function generation function is nothing but what? Triangle, sine wave. How do you get a sine wave from the same thing? I apply to a differential amplifier this triangular wave form. That means, just this one is applied to again, a, again another differential amplifier. So, that that differential amplifier has its output going to saturation and output of the differential amplifier is going to be nothing but a fairly good approximation to a sine wave. Okay. So, you just simply apply these inputs to a differential amplifier and take the output across the collectors of the differential amplifier, you get a nice sort of sine wave here, okay, which is going to be an approximation of course, to the sine wave. So, it can generate all these functions simply and that is why this is very popular uh, integrated circuit for VCO or function generation. We have seen some of the important applications of the multiplier so far. So, we will now continue uh, about discussion regarding the other types of multipliers. Let us now discuss another important IC multiplier which uses uh, the property of the active device as a switch rather than its uh, exponential or square law relationship, which was what was exploited earlier. We exploited the exponential relationship of the transistor in designing all these multipliers, whereas in the case of uh, this uh, scheme, we will now use the pulse bit and amplitude modulation 
technique wherein the device transistor MOSFET or a bipolar is used only as a switch to switch in uh, voltage. Now let us consider this situation where a switch is being used in order to switch let us say V x okay. for tau it is connected to V x right? and uh, it is then connected let us say to inverting amplifier let us say instead of putting it this way right because that is a digital inverter we will say that it is coming through an inverting amplifier inverter amplifier okay and therefore what is coming here is minus V x okay. So it is either connected to V x or connected to minus V x. So what happens here at the output is that if you now plot with respect to time, let us say it is connected to V x. So this is the output for a duration of tau and then it is connected to minus V x for a duration of T minus tau, so this being T. So what happens? This is nothing but minus V x. So for a duration of tau, it is connected to V x. The rest of the time, through this inverting amplifier, okay, inverting amplifier. That is important. It is connected to minus V x. So what happens now if you take the average of this, average is nothing but the total area under the curve V x into tau minus V x into T minus tau by T that is the average or if you can rewrite this V x into 2 tau by t minus 1. This is the average of this. Okay. Now, we have already understood how we can generate what is called as a duty cycle generator. This is modulating the amplitude okay output amplitude is modulated by v x okay now modulating the width we want another voltage which is dependent upon tau so let us see how this can be done we can consider a voltage let us say v c being applied and a triangle, let us say, of peak amplitude Vp with time period T being applied to the other end. If you do this, we can show that this triangle is going to result in with a peak amplitude of Vp 
and if you assume that this is the VC, okay, control voltage VC, the output of this comparator, let us say this is uh, plus and this is minus. So whenever this voltage, triangular voltage is higher than VC, output will go to plus Vs, right. So output will go to plus Vs here whenever this is higher than VC. Whenever it goes below V C, it will go to minus V S. So this is a very simple pulse width modulator circuit. Just a comparator is used, okay. And if you now find out the output, it is going to be just this. So assuming that this is plus V S and this is minus V S, so this will go to V S and minus V S. So this width being, let us say, if we call it as tau, this is going to be T minus tau, this time period being T. Now using similar triangles here and here, these two triangles are similar triangles. Right? So using that property, we know that this height divided by this height is nothing but this base divided by this base. So let us again write that, that height is V p divided by V p minus V c is equal to V p divided by V p minus V c equals T by 2 by tau. So from this you can get nothing but 2 tau by t, 2 tau by t is nothing but 1 minus V c by V. So, if this therefore is the controlling factor of this switch, okay, as well as the complementary switch here, this gets Q and that gets Q bar, let us say, so that it is complementary. Then we can say that 2 by 2 tau by t can be replaced by 1 minus Vc by Vp. So this is output average is going to be nothing but 1 minus uh, 2 tau by t is Vc by Vp minus Vx Vc by So by simply making use of switches appropriately, by using two simple circuits here. This is amplitude modulation, this is bit modulation and combination of this is going to result in a very accurate, precise multiplier which is Vx Vc by Vp. Vc is our Vy, okay. Vp is whatever you want, okay, 10 volts or whatever. So you can get a precise multiplication here just by using the property of the switch. Okay. And therefore, this is very popular as a very accurate multiplier. The whole thing is available in an IC chip, the bit modulator, even the triangular waveform generator. Okay. Only thing is you have to put a low pass filter outside okay, so that you get the average. What it means therefore is that this has to be working at only low frequency. This is the let us say clock at which the switching is done and the low pass filter should remove the clock frequency. right? So that is what you mean by averaging. Okay? DC is now going to be the output. That means it can only be a low frequency output. So, apart from this limitation, there is no other limitation here. Okay, both V X and V Y could be of any polarity, and therefore this is a what four quadrant multiplier, which is again one of the most popular ways of designing IC multipliers, okay, precision IC multipliers. So so far we have discussed the transconductance type multiplier, log anti-log multiplier 
and the pulse width modulation and uh, modulation pulse width and amplitude modulation type of multiplier. The only one that is now left is how to use the MOSFET property which is the square law property in designing multipliers. Okay. That we will presently take up. <coughs> There are different ways by which the square law relationship can be really used for the purpose of designing multipliers. Before we therefore go to that, I would like to uh, uh, see one of the important active units which can be finally converted into a multiplier unit which is based on the square law property of the MOSFET or okay, FET. You have to see here in the case of a MOSFET, the basic property of the MOSFET is the current I is K times okay, VGS minus VT whole square in the current saturation region. And that is for uh, let us say VGS, VDS greater than V G S minus V T. That is called current saturation region. In the other region, right, it is 2 K times V G S minus V T into V D S dependent upon V D S and there is a square law relationship in the triode region, where V D S is less than or equal to. This is applicable for the N channel okay, MOSFET, enhancement type of MOSFET. Okay, N -channel. Now, let us look at this relationship first and then this relationship. Can we use this relationship to obtain a fairly linear relationship between voltage and current and make it either current controlled or voltage controlled? It is possible. Let us assume that we have some way of using two MOSFETs. So, the general idea of all circuits using this concept, okay. suppose you get I 1 equal to let us say K 1 into V G S 1 minus V T 1 okay, whole square I 2 okay, is equal to let us say same K 1 minus V G S 2 minus V T 1 whole square, then I can say that if I use V G S 1 as some V C plus V I and V G S 2 as V C minus V I, okay, I can now get I 1 as equal to K 1 into V C Okay, minus V T 1 minus uh, plus V i okay, uh, whole square and I 2 as K 1 into V C minus V T 1 minus V i whole square. Now, you know that I 1 minus I 2 is going to be okay, K 1 into 2 Okay, so, it will be 4 V C 1 minus uh, V C minus V T 1 into V I. You have understood this? That is I 1 minus I 2, okay, but okay, this square minus this square 
and therefore a squared minus b squared is a plus b into a minus b and you can see that I am getting a differential output current here which is dependent upon input voltage V i and then a constant factor which is controllable by means of a voltage V c. So, this is a voltage control okay, what trans conductor. I mean, I have not told you how I can make V G S 1 equal to V C plus V I that we have not discussed or V G S 2 as a function of V C minus V I. Okay. If we are capable of doing this, then this is possible. So, almost all transconductors, linear okay, transconductors which are voltage controlled can be generated by using this principle with fact operating always in current saturation region. Is this clear? Now, <coughs> you can uh, generate a pair of MOSFET okay, using N channel and P channel, okay, both of which control let us say I 1 and another N channel and P channel both of which control I 2. Okay, through both of which we have I 2. Then again we can come up with the CMOS transconductor okay, which is having exactly same relationship if obviously we can get V G S 1 and V G S 2 in the following manner. Right? So, I would like you to therefore analyze this okay, based on similar lines. Okay. Instead of the this being voltage control, this particular thing is going to be current control. Okay, it will be controlled. The transconductor will be controlled by I B. Okay, root I B. So you can see that transconductor. Okay, here. Let us see. V I is this voltage. So, it is this voltage which is due to P channel MOSFET, okay, which will be dependent. I mean, you know, we have discussed this translinear principle. It will be nothing but root of current I1 divided by KP of this okay, plus the magnitude of the threshold voltage of this, okay, this voltage. So, minus plus minus plus plus root of again I 1 divided by K of n channel okay, plus V T n. Okay. This one again root of I B divided by K n plus V T n. Okay that has to be deducted, this voltage has to be deducted from this voltage. So, we can write down these voltages in a neat manner in the following way. Let us say this voltage is nothing but root of I 1 by K of P plus V T of P. Right? Of course, I am considering only the magnitude here plus root of I 1 by K n okay, plus V T of n then pardon, this voltage root of I 1 by K n okay, plus V T of n of this right, then minus root of what I B by K n again okay, minus V T n. So, that gets cancelled with this. Right. It is clear and then plus minus again minus root of I B by K P minus V T P. I think this gets cancelled with this. This is equal to V i. Okay. Now, 
Now, same thing coming from here, okay, minus plus we have again minus plus, let us write down that V i is also equal to, okay, minus plus potential rise here. So, please tell me quickly root of I b by k p plus V t p, okay, then we are coming here root of I b by k n plus V t n minus root of I 2 by K n T n minus root of I 2 by K p K p by So, this is also equal to V i. So, what do I get here? I can write V i from this as root of I 1 by k dash, k dash is a combination of k p and k m, right. So, root of I 1, okay, by k dash, okay, minus root of I b by k dash, simplifies to that and the same thing is also equal to root of I b by k dash minus root of I 2 by k dash. So, what do you get? Very simply, let us take this V i to this side, V i minus root of I b by k dash is equal to root of I 1 by k dash and what is root of I 2 by k dash? Root of I 2 by k dash is uh, V i plus, okay. V i plus. The other one is root of I 2 by k dash is nothing but, no, root of I b by k dash minus so now square this, square this, where do you get? Root will go, root will go. So now take I1 minus I2 equal to K dash, I1 minus I2 equal to K dash into okay, this square minus this square, which is uh, let us say 4 V i into root of I v by k dash. Uh, this is actually 4 V i okay, root of I v k dash. This is what I wanted you to derive okay, and yesterday we put it as g times V i and g is now recognized as 4 root of I v k dash. So, it is now a powerful active cell which can be used for any application where current controlled transconductors will be needed, okay, as uh, tune filters or VCOs or multipliers, anything. We had just finished discussing about one uh, active uh, block which we call as CMOS transconductor. We have here another one, okay, as simple as the earlier one, which is also a CMOS okay, transconductor. Or, or CMOS resistor. <coughs> that means if the voltage to current relationship is uh, uh, a two terminal thing, it becomes a resistor, otherwise it is a transconductor. Let us see, it is very simple now, 
we have already learned this uh, trick. We have to have control voltage plus V i, control voltage minus V i. So, which can be easily got here. Okay. Now, if you can make this minus V c. Right. This is V c, this is minus V c and now this is a CMOS uh, arrangement. Let us see. Again, you can see these things are arranged in a series manner. So, that this voltage V i now comes here. This is V c, this is V i. Okay. So, let us say this voltage again by the same this thing let us call this as I 1 and this current as I 2 because we are connecting voltage here. This current can be I 1, this current is I 2 and this current here is I 2 minus I 1, I 2 okay, minus I 1. So, let us see what is I 1? Now, we can get this relationship, this voltage V g s, okay, let us call it, uh, let us say T 1, this is T 2, this is T 3, and this is T 4. So, once again root of I 1 by K n okay, plus V T n is that voltage V g s 1 root of I 1 by K 1 plus V T n is this voltage V g S 1. Okay. And what is this relationship again plus root of I 1 by K p you can see plus V T p and that should be equal to V c minus V i. Is it clear? V c minus V i is equal to V g s 1 plus V g s 2. Okay. Coming to this again, V i minus minus V c that is V i plus V c is therefore again equal to V g s 3 plus V g s 4. What is V g s 3? Root of I 2 by K n plus V t n plus root of I 2 by K p plus V t p. So, you have again got this kind of relationship. Let us rewrite this now. V c minus V t n plus V t p therefore, is equal to V c minus that is equal to V i plus root of I 1 by k dash. k dash is a parallel I mean combination of k p and k n. Okay k p k n by k p plus k n. Right? So, this is what it is and then the other case V c okay, uh, minus V t uh, what is that V t n plus V t p equals root I 2 by k dash minus V i. Actually, you can now take V i that side minus V i and here plus V i. Again, square and subtract. So, I 1 minus I 2 equals k dash into what is it actually it is uh, i 2 minus i 1 we should put i 2 minus i 1 we put i 2 minus i 1 is equal to k dash into 4 v i into v c minus
So you get a differential current that is actually the input current. You can call it II. Okay, this is nothing but II. So VI by II is nothing but a resistor. Okay, linear resistor. Therefore, we get this as II. So II by VI okay, is nothing but 1 over Ri, the linear resistance, okay, which is nothing but 4K dash okay, into Vc minus Vtn. So you have a voltage controlled linear resistor using MOSFETs in current saturation. See the novelty of it. Okay. So, if you put VDD and minus VDD sufficiently large, these transistors, all of these transistors are automatically going to be in current saturation region. These are anyway all the time in current saturation region. So, these will also be in current saturation. So, you can get a wide dynamic range for the resistor. Okay this MOS resistor which is perfectly linear and voltage control. If you want now this to become a transconductor, what should you do? You have to convert this I1 into a current by putting a current mirror here, another current mirror here okay? and then you can take the current difference in the following manner. So, you can put current mirrors okay, at this point. Okay? Put the current mirrors, okay, and at this point, another current mirror, okay. One using N channel MOSFET, another using P channel MOSFET, and therefore current I1 can be pumped here like this, and current I2 can be taken here from this, and then you will get I1 minus I2. Uh, the output current, this is now going to be a current, okay, transconductor, CMOS transconductor. So, I would like you to draw the circuit of a current mirror here, okay, and a current mirror here, and this becomes voltage controlled, voltage controlled, okay, transconductor. So, this is the way you can synthesize large number of this uh, type of CMOS transconductors which are usable in variety of application, analog application.